Right. Yasmin Suka is a former TRC commissioner who is now with the Foundation for Human Rights, and she joins me now. Uh, former commissioner, thank you so much for making time on the lead. So in 2019, you wrote to President Cyril Ramaphosa together with other former TRC commissioners because you were concerned about the suppression of TRC cases. Now you've got the NPA setting up this unit to probe and prosecute apartheid era atrocity crimes. What do you think of this move? Well, you know, as I've said before, I think that while we welcome the announcement by the NPA and the Hawks that they will set up this unit that will have a dedicated team to actually deal with these cases, I think we haven't quite got all of the details yet. And one of the things that we actually asked for is for a special director to be appointed by the president, because that way you know where the buck stops. We're not very happy that they continue to emphasize um, you know, this decentralization policy where they actually send the cases to DPPs in the provinces. Because in the last two years, this is exactly what we've had. And in fact, those cases then get referred back to Pretoria for a decision. And of course, nobody is willing to make a decision. And so, you know, everybody kicks for touch. So I think that that's one of the issues that concerns us, the need for a special director that is accountable to the head of the NPA. The second, of course, is the fact that they talk about rehiring old prosecutors and investigators. Now, when you consider that over the last 23 years, there was a suppression of these cases, and many prosecutors and investigators were implicated in the cover-up. I think you would agree with me that what we need is to have an open inquiry in which we identify those people responsible so that there's a vetting and screening of the people who work on these cases. There's a separate issue, of course, and that is the commission of inquiry that we've asked the state president, the president, to actually set up. And you've heard the Minister of Justice make a statement in which he indicates that they're going to get a retired judge who are going to pursue an investigation. That is simply not good enough. We want an open public inquiry in which we understand who in the executive was compromised and who in the NPA and in the Hawks have been compromised. Because these several questions will affect the investigation and prosecution of these cases. And while we're happy that in the statement that the NPA and DPCI made, that they acknowledge that the, um, you know, not dealing with these cases amounts to denial of justice for victims, I think that's just not good enough. That violation, actually, is an abuse of human rights. It's a violation of the rights of victims and their families at both an international and domestic level. And so there's a question, who should actually be responsible? Remember also that we're in a tussle with the NPA around the question of framing the charges as international charges. And to date, what we've been given is are really unsatisfactory answers. And of course, some of these cases may fail in the prosecution if we only proceed on domestic charges. And this is a question that we also have not heard any kind of um, you know, firm conclusion on. So in my view, I think this is a step in the right direction, but it's really not good enough. And there has to be a lot more consultation with the families of victims, with the foundation, with the legal team, so that we can work these finer details out. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, how do you explain 23 years of neglect? Also, on Sunday, it was 36 years since the bodies of the Craddock Four were found. Yeah. On Saturday, it was four years since the Amor Timor inquest was problem, reopened. Right? Did yeah. it need four years for the NPA to make a decision? Yeah. After all, the full bench in the Gauteng High Court already said that they needed to do these things. Yeah, and, and that's a problem, how long it's taken. You've already indicated that you're not satisfied with the NPA head. Um, deciding that they'll be transferring the Truth and Reconciliation Commission cases to the relevant directors for prosecution in the applicable regions where the crimes were committed. I mean, as you say, this is after how many years later? Do you have any confidence 
in those cases being prioritized? You know, when we talk about, um, you know, when these cases were first referred to the NPA in 1998, Bululani Nuka actually designated them as priority crimes that would be dealt with at a central place by the NPA. Now, there was a reason for that, because somebody has to make decisions around both investigations and whether or not to prosecute. In the last 18 months, we've been in correspondence with the NPA um, on around 36 cases in which they have been referred to regional heads. If I was to show you the correspondence, this would demonstrate that nobody actually takes any responsibility for decision-making. And in the Craddock 4 case, we've been waiting since May 2020 for a decision on whether or not to prosecute. That was referred to Pretoria, and we have still not heard yet. If you look at the Ahmed Timur matter, on the case of the indictment of Sals and Ons, um, Neville Sons, um, Imtiaz Kaji is still waiting for a decision. So nobody's going to convince me and the legal team and the families of victims that this decentralization Decentralization policy works. And that is why in our letter to the president and to the NPA, we said appoint a special director as the president has the power to do. That director will then be the person where the buck stops. And you then know who to go to yeah. or who to go against for answers. At this point, it's simply really problematic. The other is the question of vetting and screaming. Can we actually have people who are complicit, involved in these cases? I think that's another inquiry that they need to satisfy us on if we are to see justice for the families of victims. Yeah. We need to ask questions, uh, former Commissioner, about the ANC government's role here. There's been criticism that the government seems to be protecting apartheid killers. Some have said... How do you explain that 25 years later there's still no accountability emanating from the outcome of the TRC? Do you think that criticism is fair? I think that criticism is fair and it's justified because, you know, when you look at the question of the political interference, Vusi Piccoli, as far as 2016, um, alleged that he had been the subject of um, suppression that he, when he decided that he would deal with these cases, this is when he was suspended. And of course, when you speak to many apartheid perpetrators, what's the first thing they say? They say, we ought to benefit from the deal. Now, what was the deal? This is the deal that is shrouded in secrecy, and yet we know that there was a special task team set up by the executive to engage with the generals on the other side to give them another opportunity at amnesty. And I think we ought to know South Africans need to be taken into confidence. And this is why we've also said to the president, please set up a commission of inquiry so we can look into what this deal was about. Now, thankfully, of course, the Supreme Court of Appeals in their judgment said that when you look at the amnesty law and you look at the amnesty process, it was very clear if you did not apply or if you were refused amnesty, then the risk that you faced was prosecution. And you can't come to the courts now and say, well, my age or I'm delayed, or I should benefit from the special deal. The court also made it very clear that such a deal would be unconstitutional. But I think as South Africans, we are entitled to ask questions of the ANC, of the state, um, as to what was this deal about? At what point, if ever, did it fall apart? And why was it actually necessary? I think we're entitled to be given the truth about um, you know, this kind of events which basically have led to a hiatus of almost 27 years with victims waiting for justice. The court singled out the Timor family and said that it was really their courage that drove this case. None of the cases you see before the courts came about because of the NPA or the Hawks. It came about because the families decided to take up the issues. And in fact, they have been pushing the NPA through litigation to actually put these cases on the roll. Um, in fact, the democratic state has mm. failed them.
and we need to have answers as to why they betrayed the rights of victims. Yeah, thank you so much for making time. That was uh, Yasmin Suka, who is from the Foundation for Human Rights and the former Commissioner of South Africa's Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Still